Hello and welcome to Smart Agriculture. I am Vivian Fernandez at Yavatmal in the Vidarbha region of Maharashtra. If there is one crop that has latterly been transformed in India, it is cotton. In 2002, the government approved three hybrids genetically modified to be resistant to insects that attack cotton bolls. They contained a gene isolated from a soil bacterium whose insecticidal properties were discovered in 1901 and were used in biopesticides since the late 1930s. The technology has been so effective in controlling bollworms that farmers have opted to use it on more than 90% of India's cotton acreage. A team of Delhi University scientists led by Professor Deepak Pentel, geneticist and former Vice-Chancellor of Delhi University, recently signed an agreement to hand over cotton plants containing the Bt bacterial gene with insecticidal properties. The gene is similar to the one which Indian regulators had approved in three hybrids 13 years ago, except for a few amino acids. The developers claim it is two times more potent against bollworms, a deadly cotton pest. They have to back cross this over the next two, three years into their best varieties. If those varieties are given to the farmers by the agriculture departments, we don't ask for anything. If they commercialize it, then we have some share of the royalty which will come to the university. Nagpur's Central Institute of Cotton Research, or CICR, is the recipient of the cotton plants. It has straight varieties and hybrids suitable for the low rain and unirrigated conditions of central India. Straight varieties are those whose seed farmers can save and sow, unlike hybrids, which lose vigor if reused and have to be bought every year. Private companies only offer BT hybrids so they can recoup investment and make a profit. Ironically, CICR seeds have been edged out of the market because they do not have the protective BT gene in them. It hopes to claw back the acceptance they once enjoyed. It will have to grow the genetically modified plants in field conditions, test them for biosafety over three to four years before obtaining regulatory approval. Our main aim is to bring the gene into some of our best allied varieties. It's important to understand that before the introduction of Bt cotton, nearly about 60 to 70 percent of the uh, of entire India's area was under the public uh, sector varieties and hybrids. Primarily about 60 percent of the area was under the straight varieties. Now these allied varieties were very good. If they would have had Bt even then, in my view the yields would have been quite easily more than what uh, we are harvesting today. So these elite varieties must be brought back, which is very important. Punjab Agriculture University, which addresses the northern cotton zone, has been already on the job. It is developing hybrids with a private Bt gene. In April, it signed an agreement with Pintel's team to render its reusable cotton seed varieties resistant to bollworms. Dr. Deepu Pintel gene we will be using for development of varieties so that we cater to the rich, far uh, bigger farmers, I will say. Larger farmers having a larger land holding and small hand holding. BT cotton hybrids are the rage in India. They are sold on more than 90% of India's cotton acreage. According to CICR, 1,667 of them have been approved from three in 2002. There are those who say the choice is confusing, but seed sellers say the farmer is king. They are discerning and village stores do not stock so many brands as made out to be. हर साल ये कंपनियां अपनी वैरायटीज वापस ले लेती हैं नई वैरायटी मार्केट में डालती हैं क्या क्या नाम से ब्रह्मा क्या क्या नाम से अलग अलग है भगवान का नाम डालकर क्या कहां पे जेम्स बॉन्ड के नाम का भी हाइब्रिड है हां हर साल चेंजेस एक नया पैकेट लाके उसका ट्रायल देख लेने का अगले साल उसको लेना नहीं लेना बाद में सोचने का अच्छा क्रॉप रहा तो अगले साल उसको लगाने का ज्यादा Vijay Mahadev Nivar of Yavatmal in Vidharb is a big farmer who boasts that he had distributed pirated BT cotton seeds from Gujarat a year before the government had approved them in 2002. A member of the Shetkari Sangatan, which wants minimal state interference in agriculture, he says they had little patience with the long-winded regulatory process and the politics that was holding up approval of BT hybrids. An engineer by training and a progressive farmer, Nivar does not quite agree with CICR that India is over-dependent on hybrids and rain-fed areas like his, which is half of India's cotton acreage, should opt out. 
जो हमारे पिताजी थे वो भी वेराइटी से हाइब्रिड तक शिफ्ट हो गए ऐसा नहीं हुआ कि एक दिन की प्रक्रिया नहीं है कि कोई भी आके हमको समझा दे कि ये करो वो करो लेकिन ये तो हम सुनते हैं लेकिन हम खुद एक्सपीरियंस करते हैं कि यहाँ सॉइल कौन सी भी हो हल्का हो भारी हो हाइब्रिड सीड हमको ज़्यादा भाता है उत, उत, उसकी प्रोडक्टिविटी ज़्यादा हमने महसूस किया है The wide adoption of BT seeds despite their high prices speaks for their endorsement by farmers. BT is a protective gene, not a production gene, but it has delivered multiple benefits. Ah, no, it's a benefit to the BT. 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 क्रॉप अच्छा होना लगा है क्रॉप अच्छा होकर खर्चा भी उसके पीछे बन बढ़ गया पहले जो खेती करते थे वो एक अपने पुरा पुरानिक जो लोग थे जैसा अपने बाप दादा वो पेड़ देते थे पेड़ने के बाद में करके उसको कुछ किया यानी स्प्रे की ये नहीं थी उसमें तो थोड़ा बहुत पकता था यानी ये प्रमाण में नहीं पकता था आज बिटी का आने के कारण से उसमें करके अभ्यास उसके ऊपर स्टडी अपने करना पड़ता है किसको क्या देना चाहिए किस वक्त में क्या हर एक किसान स्टडी नहीं करता लेकिन स्टडी करके अगर खेती किया तो उसमें लॉस नहीं आया बाय रिड्यूसिंग लॉस टू पेस्ट्स इट हैज मोर देन ट्रिपल्ड इंडियाज प्रोडक्शन फ्रॉम 10 मिलियन बेल्स इन 2001 टू टू 35 मिलियन बेल्स दिस ईयर द अश्योरेंस ऑफ प्लांट प्रोटेक्शन एंड एक्सटेंशन ऑफ इरिगेशन हैज इंक्रीज्ड एरिया अंडर कॉटन फ्रॉम 9 मिलियन हेक्टेयर्स टू 12 मिलियन हेक्टेयर्स ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड From being an importer, India has turned exporter. Exports have increased from half a lakh bales to seven million during the time, after hitting a peak of 13 million in between. Insecticide usage for bollworm control has fallen 20-fold, from 4,470 tons in 2002 to 222 tons in 2011, according to CICR. This dramatic reduction has contained the overall insecticide load on cotton. Despite a threefold increase in sprays against sucking pests, which are not targeted by BT and against which resistance can be created even through conventional breeding, the Central Institute for Cotton Research is propagating a farming practice which it believes will help farmers avoid bollworm infestation entirely or very substantially. It recommends growing short-duration, early maturing varieties that can cheat bollworms by putting out cotton bolls before the pests arrive every season. It also advises very high density planting about 10 times the Indian norms to make up for fewer bolls per plant. This means using cheaper state varieties whose seed farmers can save and reuse unlike costlier hybrids that have to be purchased every year. It says it's persuaded only by economics and the science, but its stand has provided grist to ideologues who are opposed to private enterprise and free markets. Mahatma Gandhi made Sevagram in Vardha his home after the Dandi March and the Salt Satyagraha. Here he lived an austere life, wearing homespun and working the charkha. He had come to Vardha at the invitation of his industrialist benefactor Jamnalal Bajaj, who had set up Shiksha Mandal, a charitable educational trust. It is through the trust that CICR is trying to win back rain-fed cotton areas in central India to its agronomic philosophy of high-density planting of early maturing varieties. आज हम जिन तंत्रों की बात कर रहे हैं वो रिसोर्स पुअर फार्मर इस्तेमाल नहीं कर सकते और ये दूसरी बात भी देखनी चाहिए महाराष्ट्र में कि हमारे यहाँ पे बारिश सितंबर के बाद में ख़त्म होती है जब पौधा बढ़ता होता है तब उसकी पानी की ज़रूरत कम है पर जब पौधे में फूल और बोल लगने शुरू होते हैं तब उसकी पानी की ज़रूरत दुगनी हो जाती है दुगनी से ज़्यादा होती है बारिश तो हम नहीं ला सकते तो असिंचित किसानों के लिए जिसमें वो कम खर्चे में मुनाफा ले सके इसके लिए इसके अलावा कोई और तंत्र नहीं है अजय विट्टोबाजी अंबोरे इज अ फार्मर हुम द शिक्षा मंडल हैज परसुएटेड टू ट्राई आउट सीआईसीआरस नॉन बीटी सीड्स व्हिच सेल फॉर 150 रुपीस अ किलोग्राम द सीड्स मस्ट बी दैट चीप फॉर हाई डेंसिटी प्लांटिंग ऑफ एट लीस्ट 44000 प्लांट्स पर एकर टू बी वायबल द शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन वैरायटीज विल पुट आउट बोल्स इन द मॉनसून व्हिच बोलवर्म्स अवॉइड as their eggs will get washed out bt hybrids are not suitable for dense planting as they cost 5 times more at 830 rupees for half a kilogram in maharashtra 
Ambore has three of four acres under BT. He is trying out non-BT on one acre. वो अभी डेमो करके लगा रहा मैं इस साल पहली बार लगा रहा अभी तक तो नहीं लगाया अभी एक एकर में लगाते देखेंगे कैसा है क्या है तो Despite high prices farmers do not mind paying so long as high yields and lower pesticide costs compensate but farmer leaders like Vijay Jhavandia of Vardha are seeing a conspiracy in the public sector not developing their own BT technology to rescue farmers from the clutches of private companies हम टेक्नोलॉजी के विरोधक नहीं है पर टेक्नोलॉजी वो होनी चाहिए कि जो भारत के किसान की आर्थिक स्थिति को दुरुस्त करे ना कि उसका इस टेक्नोलॉजी के चक्रव्यूह में अभिमन्यु बना दे आज भारत का किसान इस टेक्नोलॉजी के चक्रव्यूह में अभिमन्यु बन गया है वो अंदर घुस तो गया है पर उसके बाहर नहीं निकल पा रहा है ये बाहर निकालने का काम करने वाला जो कृष्ण है वो भारत सरकार होनी चाहिए Then there are Gandhians like Narendra Misal, also known as Bala Sahib, who frown on BT technology and chemical fertilizers. For them, cotton growing is a political statement. They are not fixated on yield and output, but what is left on the table. High yield agriculture gets their thumbs down if they have to pay a price for it. लोगों का जो जो मानसिकता है कि ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा yield आना चाहिए, उसका वास्तविक रूप से देखा जाए तो उसका खर्चा भी ज़्यादा होता है बीटी जो जो लोग भी बीटी लेते हैं उनका खर्चा भी ज़्यादा होता है और मीडिया और एडवर्टाइजमेंट का भी ज़्यादा प्रभाव लोगों के ऊपर है बीटी का एडवर्टाइजमेंट जो भी मार्केट में चलता है उसका इफेक्ट ज़्यादा है इस कारण भी लोग बीटी के और ज़्यादा मोड़ रहे हम लोग उस दृष्टि ने न रखते हुए में कम से कम खर्चा भी हो और इनकम साइड ज़्यादा इनकम अच्छा मिले इस साइड से हम सोचते हैं वी स्लिप इन टू अ ब्रेक वन वी रिटर्न वी प्रोसीड टू सौराष्ट्र टू एनक्वायर वद दिस ईयर्स प्राइस लंप विल एंड्योर एंड वॉट इट मीन्स फॉर द कॉटन इकोनॉमी स्टे विद यू वॉचिंग स्मार्ट एग्रीकल्चर Welcome back to Smart Agriculture. We are in Rajkot in the Saurashtra region of Gujarat, which is a center for cotton and groundnut production. This is where cotton farmers protested earlier this year when prices fell, forcing the government to intervene. With global prices of most commodities at multi-year lows, cotton prices are unlikely to recover to the peaks seen a few years back any time soon. If seed companies want farmers to stick to cotton, they'll have to find other ways to compensate. Raghavendra Singh Ji Jadeja belongs to one of Saurashtra's 222 erstwhile princely estates that were welded into the Indian Union after independence. A breeder of pure gheer cattle, he has their tree lines going back 98 years. He is similarly meticulous about agriculture. For the sake of costing and accounting, he has divided his 150 acre farm into a grid of 1 acre plots for each of which he keeps elaborate records. Jadeja is like the long-term investor who does not go by daily market movements but hedges his risk by growing a portfolio of commodities. Despite the slump in cotton prices, he is not shifting out of it. Our plantation farm is a fixed crop in multiple cropping. What happens? If there is no rate, we can sell it. And if it is low, we can stock it. One crop is growing and the climate is changing. There is a total failure of the farmers. इसलिए मल्टीपल क्रॉप में एक साथ सब क्रॉप पकते नहीं है वही लेबर का यूज हम यूज करते हैं थोड़ा ज्यादा लेबर की जरूरत नहीं है और सोयल का सोयल में जो रोटेशन करते हैं सोयल के लिए अच्छा है 
At the APMC market in Gondal, the effect of this year's falling cotton prices is palpable. The Mundi distributes some of its profits to farmers by subsidizing BT cotton seeds by 200 rupees a pack of 450 grams. From its seed sales, a shift to groundnut is discernible. हमारे यहाँ APMC से जो कॉटन का सीड हम बिक्री कर रहे थे हर साल 20,000 पैकेट हम बिक्री करते हैं लेकिन इस साल 15,000 ही पैकेट बिक्री हुआ है तो कॉटन का जो है अभी-अभी जो पौधावर हो रही है उसमें कम हो ऐसा लगता है अभी डिमांड है ग्राउंडनट का ग्राउंडनट का सीड का इतना डिमांड है बाद में यह कि हमारे गोंडल विस्तार में जो बहुत बारिश हुआ है इसलिए कॉटन के ऊपर जो जो ऐसा हुआ 50 टका कॉटन का जो सीड है वो बाहर नहीं निकल सका है For the three years from 2009-10 to 2011-12, the CACP, the official agency which fixes support prices for commodities, estimated the cash cost of cultivating cotton plus the notional value of family labor at 13,500 rupees an acre, the returns at 26,000 rupees and the rate of profit at 95%. But with the slump in prices, farmers are demanding technologies that will save on labor. Technology is ईयर बोलते हैं जिंदगी की तो उसमें तो फायदा मिला है लेकिन दूसरा क्या है अभी रस्सू से का सूसने वाली टीड़ा रस्सू जो पत्ते को ये ऐसा ऐसा खोखला कर देती है रस्सू सूस पर तो इसमें क्या है कि वो कपास पूरा लाल कर देती है तो उसके बारे में टेक्नोलॉजी तो अच्छा है एक वो हमारे यहाँ इन्हें निंदा ही और अभी वो जो फवारे वगैरह तन नाशक के निकले ना इसमें ज़्यादा खर्चा हो जाता लेबर में ज़्यादा चले जाता लेबर टाइम आया तो 300 रुपए रोज बोलते हमको ना अब 300 रुपए रोज देना पड़ेगा मजबूरी में अब उम्र मेरी और और उस अट क्यों होगी पहले मारा फवारे खुद ही खाना खा� since farmers pay 5 to 10 rupees to pick a kilogram of cotton, machine picking is eagerly awaited. This means tailoring planting practices and plant structures to the requirement of machines. The dense cropping pattern which CICR advocates will require machines to harvest. BT seed companies are also recommending hybrid plant populations of 14,000 an acre, which is double the number they were earlier advising, but much less than the 44,000 that CICR is pushing for. Spacing of fertilizer application, use of drips and limiting plant height so nutrients are not wasted in vegetative growth are other practices being suggested to reduce costs and improve profitability. Despite having the largest area under cotton and hybrids, India ranks 33 among 80 countries in productivity. Seed companies will continue to bring in new technology, but farmers will have to match their agronomic practices so that the yield gap closes. In this episode, we have seen how the private sector responded to a felt need for a plant protection technology which farmers have wholeheartedly endorsed. The state sector has remained on the sidelines, though some like Gujkot have joined the flow. Others like the Central Institute of Cotton Research believe over-reliance on hybrids or any particular technology is not wise and a course correction is required, in which case it would be advised to harness the initiative and drive a private enterprise with appropriate incentives. That is all we have in this episode of Smart Agriculture. We'll be back with another. Till then, goodbye and thanks for watching.